<laughs> oh no no no! You 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 you, you 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 put a little scarf on him and a carrot nose, and he's Snow Cane Voltron. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> don't give Marvel ID. And welcome back to another Linux Emcast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. And that's Jordan, and over there is Pedro Mateus. Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us warm. Cocaine Voltron. That's two Voltron canes. With two canes. Quit trying to turn it into a drug thing, YouTube. That's wrong. <laughs> Naughty. It's just it's the uh, problem with your closed captions, not yes, us. Exactly. Listen, you are being ableist. Cocaine Voltron needs both canes to stay upright. Otherwise, he's gonna fall over. You want to that, 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 that's like a slip and fall suit waiting to happen. You don't do, want that on your on your hands, YouTube. Do, do you YouTube. think like if I got like a sports, uh, like maybe some Oakleys and like turn it into like a brocane? Like, hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> bro, bro brocane. <laughs> turn it into a standard bro. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You, 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 you put a little scarf on him and a carrot nose and he's snow cane Voltron. <laughs> it's a, don't give Marvel ideas, man. We've been down this road. Hey, uh, before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs, man, because uh, I, I streamed a little something, a little something Friday. I've been waiting for it. I've been waiting for it to come out, and that's God of War on Linux. And it wasn't on Linux. It was on Proton, but Proton's the new Linux these days. Uh, Proton is right. the new Linux. I'll talk that's about shot. it. I'll talk about it a little bit later. But I did wrap up the um, Mark of the Unicorn M4 interface like all the shooting and the video stuff that's up before um, it's in discord right now in the announcement segment. I'll put it up on Patreon tomorrow. It's not the final version of the video, but it will give you an idea of whether or not you would want to buy one. And um, yeah, that, that was pretty interesting. Uh, it's always fun to, you know, take a recent interface because that's something that came out in 2019. Then, you know, the supply chain collapsed and we could yes. get a whole one. And then, and then 2020 happens. Yeah. And it's still happening. It hasn't stopped. We're rolling into 2022. So I plugged that thing in and fed it some penguins and we'll find out the end result. Kind of impressed by it. What about you, Jordan? Oh, it might snow tonight, which is a terrifying aspect. Uh, something to think about here because the power might go out. And last time it iced up, it's not really the snow, it's the ice because we're very ill prepared in Athens for um, any type of weather like this. I was fine. Power one, like, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just play around the internet. And then the internet went out. And that, that's when things started getting dark, man. <laughs> what do we do now? We're devolving as a society. Yeah. No, uh, it's, it, yeah, it's minus 25 out today. So uh, that was, that was a fun little walk of the dog moment. No, uh, I've been, I've been trying to blitz through uh, what's left in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond because the new one is coming out next week. Um, and yeah, uh, trying, trying to team up, level up my dudes. I think I have my team ready to go. I might, I might stream that if I have some time this week. Now, you, can wa- you can watch me fall on my face. This, this is kind of a shocking. How much? All in does a new Pokemon game cost in Canada? It costs one hundred dollars with tax, Ben. I was gonna say ninety, but fuck, <laughs> not, not, it's, like, it's 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 like ninety eight something. It's basically a hundred bucks. Why? Just because they got to go through the dialogue and put some A's in there? That's not worth it, then, to do. You're yeah, right. no, <laughs> no, they, they, they got they got to re they got to redo all the animation to give them the floppy heads ah, too. All right, yeah. ah, okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. Pedro, have you bought something small? You're going to electrocute, possibly. Maybe. Well, uh, the, something might go up in flames. Uh, but yes, I bought a lot of small things, and they come in these uh, a floppy rubber thing. So, yeah. But yeah, floppy, they're floppy. Uh, laptop adapters. Uh, for uh, they take a five point five uh, two point one barrel jack uh, at the bottom, and then they output to all of them because you know. Uh, stand, uh, laptops and uh, standard power jacks weren't a thing before USB C, and even now that we have USB C, it's still not a thing. So, uh, have, 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 have you tried yeah. to make like the tower of power with all of them, like stacking them all end to end to end to end, end, and then try to they, plug it they, into something? Most of them don't really fit uh, uh, onto the bottom, but yeah, no, th- this well, should you, keep you, me you, you got that pine while. soul. <laughs> you can you can take care of that. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I could oh, man. technically. No, I, I love that simply because it drastically increases the chance of having the wrong voltage set on the um adapter when you plug it into smoking yes. something. Like that. <laughs> 
Because I've done that. Most of them are 19, except for that (laughs) 7.1-inch 701 triple EPC. That one is 9.5. And that's that's the only one that isn't 19. That's the one that's going to cut on and off real quick that one time. You go, oh. What's that (laughs) smell? (laughs) Welp. (laughs) Unlike the horse, which is quite possibly powered by spite. I mean, it smells that way. It's the steam. Let it update. Valve time. Never heard of it. So this is you. You may have gotten an email if you uh, put five dollars down for the uh, Steam Deck pre-orders, and lo and behold, you, you you may have had your heart broken the first time around when they said that there was going to be a delay. But it looks like there's not going to be any more delays, according to this. Um, they say they're on track, and now because I have said that. And because Valve has said that, there's going to be another delay. Some boat is going to get stuck in a canal or something. That's just how this shit works. Um, but uh, they lo- it looks like uh, things are going to be... Uh, you, you can, you can, if you're pre-ordering the Steam Deck, you can be expecting an email sometime at the end of February where you will be asked to provide the rest of your credit card digits and an address to mail it to. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I always look forward to that email. <laughs> yeah, and if you if you scroll down on the little article, there's a there's a whole row of uh, KDE desktops that have to zoom and enhance. Like they didn't they didn't they didn't just put Windows on there to troll all of us, did they? No, that's it's the KDE desktop. I think that's just the default. If you create a page on the Steam Store, it's just Windows. <laughs> I don't know. That's KDE. Yeah, that that that's yeah. running KDE and that uh, zoom, AMD- zoom and enhance. It's the AMD. I can zoom uh, or I can enhance. Make up your mind. (laughs) You must do both. (laughs) Mash your face on the keyboard. This is is the real world, man. (laughs) You you could have fooled me. Fair enough. So, yeah, I mean, we were talking about that in the pre-pre super shows. Like once they sent out that email and like, hey, we're going to give us the rest of that money because Valve is not like we need additional funding. It's Valve, you know, like then it's going to be hopefully just ready to ship right around the corner. But I do wonder, because Pedro brought up the point, how many people had their three, four, five hundred dollars set aside for this long and ran out of that willpower? I'm like, oh, but I wanted to uh, no, And they spent their money on a new video. No, they didn't. Um, <laughs> they, they, they bought an Aya Neo, obviously. <laughs> they spent yeah, that no, $500 they probably bought a seven, on a used uh, 5700 GCP. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's the, like the best GPU, the best selling GPU nowadays has to be the AMD APUs and the new Intel processors, because apparently DXE graphics and those are pretty good. Mm. Intel, where's the dedicated GPUs? Listen, Come on. You know, you, 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 not for you. Not give, for you. Give me a motherboard and some tape. I'll make one for you. <laughs> yeah, you just got, you just got, you know, you know the, the, the motherboards are actually like modular. You can just break them off. Yeah. Just, yeah, That'd be great. Plug, plug, plug it, plug it in. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead and find that trace, bitch. <laughs> so, Perrier, Lou, Grievous, Monster Hunter Rise, good news. Yes, it's the, uh, the. You may have seen it. It released a couple of days ago, and day one, Pierre Lou uh, Pierre Lou uh, came out and said, "Monster Hunter Rise looks solid on Proton at launch." Special kudos to Capcom, apparently, because they provided uh, the uh, Steam folks early access to it so that they could try it out with Proton and get it fixed. They did that with uh, Resident Evil, too. Yep. And Capcom, seriously, there's a bunch of Capcom games that I do like. And I see people playing Monster Hunter, and I feel like I want to like it. But then I play it and everything is just a chore. I don't know, man. It's grind. It's I'm like 15 seconds into this video and it's just like Dragon Board. Is that, is that the thing? <laughs> mm. I, I mean, yeah, pr- that was you're, you're going to be spending video. a lot of time. They were just showing. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to be looking at that leg quite a bit in the actual gameplay. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and it's annoying the, the how grindy the gameplay is, but it is, it's very good to Jeez. see that it was, yes, yes. that DLC We're not done yet. it's one of them <laughs> uh, what's, 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 but it's 194 bucks, it okay, out of the box 
sixty dollar game with one hundred ninety four dollars worth of DLC. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it, it's all cosmetic shit. No, no one's expected to buy all of it, but they they have that complete pack because they know someone. Jeez. Yeah, I, I was actually I was actually talking to another friend about this uh, who is into the Monster Hunter games this week, and apparently Rise runs like complete ass on the Switch. So hopefully the uh, the Steam Deck is a better love story, and hopefully the uh, goddamn netcode will work. Because well, this is a problem with the Steam Deck these days. That's not what I'm interested in. I want Yuzu. Ah. Playing Monster Hunter World on my dick. <laughs> <laughs> you can play the Switch version on PC much better. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I mean, I mean you, you know, if you already paid like 80 bucks, if you paid 100 bucks Canadian, because, you know, that's that's first party Nintendo prices yes. for your Switch yeah. version of Monster Hunter Rise. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to pay another $60 on a PC for that. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So another mention in the world of Proton. <laughs> that was the only thing that came out this week with the good news, everyone. Boy. Boy. Got a Proton. Got a War. Look solid on Proton at launch. Special thanks go to Sony for providing the early access. Uh, today's experimental release in nice. version of Proton <laughs> contains a performance optimization for it. Neat. I streamed a little bit of that Friday uh, outside of the initial, um, like, I went through the trouble. I'm like, okay, let's do this PS4. Okay. Cut the PS4 controller on. Got props for the Xbox. <laughs> Bold move, man. Didn't expect that. Sony title. <laughs> Like, huh. And uh, here's one thing we did learn that you cannot disconnect your uh, Xbox One controller and um, connect your PS4 controller. I mean, you can, it just doesn't do anything. So you got to start the game back. Small bug there. Uh, the only problem I had performance wise is that they took a very interesting, a very strange, I might say, flex. It's the only game I've encountered. Again, I none of us own a ton of Windows games, but. It doesn't have an exclusive full screen. It doesn't sound like a problem, but it is. It really is because that means that, okay, during the stream, I was running in a 1080p window because I was streaming it. I had everything on like normal and I could cut it on high. I could cut the LSS on. Yeah, it's a good story. It was on like 60, 50, you know, well above 60. This, if you full screen it, you get 2160p or whatever the current resolution of your desktop is. That wouldn't be a problem. If you could select resolution from there, you can. It's not an option. It's grayed out. 2160p. So in order to play full screen, I have to do that. Enable DLSS, dial it down to good quality, then dial the DLSS down to fugly, which is upscaling 720p. Then I can kind of get near 60 again until I can. Because then I got to, after I went through the first Stargate, you know, me and Tilk took the adventure with our son. And uh, it was like 45, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 50. R- Ryak, I think that's Til- Ryak, Tilk's son's yes. name. Yes, yes, yes. Tilk yeah. and Ryak, we went on that adventure. So, um, yeah, but the saving grace from this problem on Windows 2, the most popular thread on the um, God of War forums right now is <laughs> people going, weird flex, bro. Um, why can't we <laughs> like add this? Maybe that'll get patched in. Um I, I don't know. We had that not too long ago. Uh, I think it's it was usually the, the other way around. Like we don't get yeah. a window mode. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, I wonder though, cause uh, the uncharted collection also, um, also came out recently. Right. Mm. Um, I wonder if that's going to have a similar problem. I wonder if this is going to be like a recurring thing with the uh, PS4 ports. I don't know. I don't know. I will say um, running performance wise, I got a 2060, which is considered a mid range card in 2022 because weird times. Right. <laughs> Um, that with my 1920X, my little thread ripper, uh, with everything on good at 1080p in a window, it holds 70, 75, which is decent because that gives you enough wiggle room for the like fancy elfy fight areas, which will knock it down clearly down about 60. Um, no crashes or anything like that. The shaders better love story now than it was on launch day because <laughs> man, that was chuggy, but. We, we were having, there are some now, dude. It, it was like the old days before we had a uh, shader pre caching. When you'd go into a zone, you're like, We're just gonna stand here and spin right round, mm-hmm. baby. And then, like, ah, it's all loaded. Then you take another step and it starts loading something. Else. Like, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, there is my report on, um, like it, it works. I mean, for all intents and purposes, reading the reviews, I'm like, Yeah, it works. And I mean, I can't think of a recent. Like Days Gone was a really good port, and uh, Horizon Ginger Turbo 
ran fine after they did some updates to uh the d- whatever not DXVK but the D12 VK3DVK D3 DVK. yeah that one yep. <laughs> come on let's, let's <laughs> merge all of this and we're just gonna call it Greg all right <laughs> we're, we're we're just gonna call it the point VK, is to merge VK, everything VK, into DXVK VK, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh proton change logs so. Yeah, uh, you know, God of War support for performance wasn't the only thing that got added with uh, Proton Experimental. We got uh, this is this is the dumb thing is that you actually have to look at the diff in their change log <laughs> to figure yes. out what the hell actually gets added in Proton. <laughs> but um, they uh, they have a fix for a Doom Eternal's multiplayer, so that should be working now. Uh, if you really insist on using Sea of Thieves voice chat, you can. I just use Discord. Um, apparently, if you were trapped forever in the land of no alt tab in Age of Empires, and oh man, tra- one one day Proton is going to make Pathfinder: War on the Righteous like actually playable. But you know, today is not that day. Uh, they're working <laughs> on it though. Uh, it, it, won't, it won't it won't hang on exit anymore. So yeah, you know it's 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 going on. We're, we're I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of these uh, these added diffs to this text file as we get closer to that February uh, deadline for sure. Yeah, it, but I mean, tell me, it's this is very exciting right now because you genuinely don't know what you're going to yeah. be getting week, week to week, and we're going to see little things slip out and things getting better and things getting tweaked and very mm-hmm. very interesting time to be somebody who runs linux day in and day out but also plays video games because again i will stress this mythical person who switches from windows to just to play games under linux doesn't fucking exist despite what um that not this linux linus but the other one did an entire video series on that's a mythical being but <laughs> i was a little disappointed we did a search in the pre pre super shows and um like oh multiplayer there's no Coop, like legitimate Coop mod for Doom Sorry. 2016 or Doom Eternal. Yeah, apparent apparently there's like a there's like a co-op mode for the multiplayer where you can like string maps together mm. and you can use the official maps. So with that, you can sort of hack together a multiplayer campaign. I gotta look into that because that'd, that'd be that'd be pretty yeah. Cool, but apparently, it resets your guns, so you start each map, including the latter game ones, with just a pistol. Have you seen us I mean, play I mean, multiplayer Doom? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's not it's not going to make anything better or worse. Let's let's be real. It's a lateral move. I mean, we were talking like a solid fifteen minutes on that last boss before. We're like, oh, that's how we do damage. Got it. All yeah, right. yeah. Or or fucking Wolfenstein. Oh, we just need to. Have, we just need to chase them in a circle. Oh, three hours, <laughs> three hours, three different episodes of just that. We got really good and, at and, that. And first then, part and then we got bumped back to like the previous oh, stage right? too. We had to, right? yeah. Oh, that was wrong. So, Pedro, um, I, I want you to explain to me um, what are we doing in terms of community to help curb Steve's graffiti issue. Because now he's even writing on cars and video games. <laughs> and he drew a poopy on there, too. Mm-hmm. That's rude. Totally uncalled for. Yeah, what, what, what would Jill uh, that, think? She'd probably laugh at it. Honestly, I, I want Maybe. Steve to do more graffiti just because it is, um, well, it's apt. But yeah, no, this is uh, Buck Up and Drive. It is, uh, I read the name of the developer and it sounded very Portuguese. And then I saw, ooh, there's a Linux version. So let's shoot him an email and uh, ask for... Um, ask for some keys and big kudos to Fabio Funch. He actually sent us some, uh, and yeah, it is a, (laughs) I mean, the blurb just says there is time to explain. I just don't want to, and it is a very edgy game and, uh, we're going to be throwing chairs at it. So stick around. But, uh, yeah, no, the, the thing that first drew me in was the presentation, seeing like the cars doing the flips Mm -hmm. and the grinds. It's like, Oh my God, I want to play that. Uh, that, that lasted right up until I uh, we got the keys and I hit the play button. But more on that later. <laughs> yeah, rem- re- remember, kids, DOS to Unix is a utility that exists that will correct your line endings when you're moving in between operating systems. Yes. We'll, uh, yes. we'll get to that a little bit later, as uh, Pedro mentioned. So this uh, next one, I guess I'll take it. Since, uh, sure, yeah. Um, I, I saw this and I immediately thought of one Pedro Mateus, but I couldn't remember it. Like, because Pedro's in a constant search of like thing to do. Current thing right now is like yes. baby laptop restoration. But if you rewind a few months, you know, he was practicing thieving. He, he was getting into lock. <laughs> I still do. I still, uh, I actually need to get more locks because I've already found out how, how to pick all the ones that Real I, question. Have, so I need more. Real have question. you picked your nose though? Hang on. Real question. Would you lock yourself outside? Okay. With a lock pick set. 
outside your door? Could you get in? I don't want to try it on the door because if something happens and that's a bigger concern. Listen, Nori. <laughs> I need to tell some theories. <laughs> I, I don't know. The, 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 que- the question isn't so much, can you get through the door, is are you getting your damage deposit back? Yes. Yes or no? <laughs> that too. Also, this is an apartment building, and I live on the ground floor, so there's a lot of people walking through. It's like, uh, what are you doing? It's, like, it's really I cute how you, how you don't seem to think that I've thought this through. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that? Oh, yeah, 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 you're okay. just no, you, you, you haven't seen you haven't seen the Pepe Silvia diagram about this. You showed me it. It's <laughs> pretty disturbing. <laughs> Watered yeah. it. Uh, Museum of Mechanics lock picking is their first salvo. It's lock picking, but what they're doing is taking like all the different types of lock picks throughout history. Air quotes, uh, real history, game history, I guess too, and like tossing them in and letting you have a go at it. And it's almost fascinating. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Like the whole the whole idea here, uh, the, the the guy has a little blurb in the game description, and he's basically saying like when you when you're a game designer and you're trying to pick like what you want to include in your games, usually you'll go to other games for inspiration for like specific mechanics because you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel necessarily. But it's kind of hard to see like conceptually Skyrim lock picking versus Fallout lock picking versus Thief lock picking. So this game, this is a game that sort of reverse engineered all of them, puts them all in one place so you can dick around with them and see what you like. And they even stuck a uh, lock picking roguelike in there just for gits and chiggles. Hmm. Yep. And the Oblivion lock pick mini game by far was the worst. Uh, and they also don't include that was one of the things that I went looking the Morrowind lock picking mini game because that's just RNG. You just click and it goes. Did you succeed? Yes, no. Go on. I don't know. I mean, when I see something like this, my brain was like, you probably need to learn how to uh, pick uh, accurate locks from different time periods. I'm like, why, brain? And I'm scared. They're like, trust me on this, just in case. Like, uh, like quantum, quantum leap. Yeah. It turns out you're Scott Bakula. Oh man. But Hey, <laughs> look at it this way. They distilled the best parts of Skyrim into a single game. No, no. A Skyrim oh. uh, and fallout. I think it, this was introduced in fallout three, which used the oblivion engine. But I think Bethesda realized that no one liked the lock picking mini game in oblivion. So they changed it to what the Skyrim one ended up being as well. No, with uh, fallout three. <laughs> I will say this, this does hinge on the lock picking being more involved than wiggle wiggle break. No. Yeah. <laughs> but but Most you know you know you, you you can find out what wiggle wiggle break is your favorite wiggle wiggle break. It's easy as red too. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. All right, easy easy red too. Uh it's a realistic uh combat simulator for World War II with uh, realistic guns, vehicles, uh, uniforms and they want big, big maps. And, uh, it is, where is it? Um, yeah, it has a, it has a Linux version. Um, so yeah, um, there, the, the graphics here, they kind of give me like, um, big medal of honor allied assault for the mm-hmm. PlayStation two vibes, which <laughs> admittedly was a great game. I love that fucking game. I played through the entire thing where you have to steal like the Nazi stealth bomber. That shit's great. Um, but you know, uh, graphics have progressed, uh, in the years since then. Uh, but again, when you're doing big maps, you don't necessarily want like super high fidelity because otherwise you're gonna have to keep that entire map in memory. It's no good. Um, so yeah, if you liked Verdun, uh, in, uh, this might be for you, and you just wanted some more realistic World War action. What 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 if yeah. this is for people who like Verdun but uh, have less than thirty two gigabytes of RAM? <laughs> well, uh, spo- 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 spoilers. We'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get to be- we'll get to besiege later. But <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, so. but yeah, no, the big kudos to the developers. Um, Let's see, Marco Amade or, or the Corvo Studio, the Amade Marco, um, for sending us keys. Mm. Thank you very much. And uh, the the one thing that I noticed is the game is called Easy Red Two. Yeah. But if you look at the logo, it's Easy to Red. That 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 that's how it's spelled. Well, it's what, easy what, to what, red. What what's gonna satisfy you? Easy to beige. You, you, you know, you know, you, you know what? Redding is hard, Pedro. Redding is very hard. Yeah, no, it's clearly not very easy to red because I, I, I was confused. <laughs> Tell us about. I don't know. Maybe, maybe pictures are your speed, like card suits. Yes. 
Absolutely. I, I, I very much like the, uh, the cards and uh, I played magic the gathering because I like looking at the pretty pictures. I'm only half joking. I was not but, going to uh, debate that with you. <laughs> I, you know, no, I, I believe you. I believe yeah. you. Uh, I'm only half joking about that seriously, but, uh, yeah, the, um, one of the things that I also like is card games, collectible card games and games that use cards for different mechanics like Slay the Spire, which is a roguelike in the traditional sense, but instead of being in the more traditional top-down ASCII character type of situation, you have cards that indicate what moves your dude does. And, well, they're doing some testing for the deck. Uh, specifically, they have added UI scaling and uh, Steam input to uh, accommodate the up-and-coming Steam Deck release, which left me a bit confused because the Steam Deck has a touchscreen. So I I'm looking at this game and I've tried it on laptops with touchscreens and yeah, it works pretty good. You just grab a card and you fling it up. So done. Valve, Valve hey, doesn't want you using the touchscreens though. They, they said they said as much in their uh, developer <laughs> documentation. They said that's supposed to be a fallback or last resort. But you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, those hundreds of lazy mobile port devs that are rejoicing at that little bit of hardware addition. It's like, oh my god, we don't need to map a controller to this thing now? We've got a touchscreen on them? Yeah! Oh man, do you think that it, oh, now that you've spoken that in that, 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 that flood of like deck only um, you know the, yeah. the, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Play Store rejects it's literally yeah. just the Android version it's like, yeah, use the touchscreen there Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. So, this game man, it's been with us almost as long as we've been doing the show. Besiege, everyone's favorite murder simulator. I mean, it's Lego for bad people. And um, yes, it, it's gotten advanced all of a sudden. I, okay, hang on. All of you, both of you, everyone involved. Mm -hmm. Were you like, wait, it wasn't? Was what was your response to this? I, you know, you know, I, 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 I thought it, it, that. I doesn't surprise me. It's 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 kind of like that that Minecrafty game it wouldn't surprise me that it's thirty two bit. We're we're still we're still fighting that battle in twenty twenty two as mm. we can see here. But you know, Besiege has surrendered ironically, and now has a sixty four bit version, which means that you can go a little bit crazier in the multiplayer uh, because now you're no longer limited to uh, four gigs of RAM. Uh, you, uh, yes, you can use LPAE to give you, Are you more accessible. You can do NAND gates with this thing now. Yeah, they add, they added NAND gates. Uh, mm -hmm. the, a bunch of a bunch of stuff for the level editors. More performant explosions, taking advantage of all the memory that your system has to offer now. Um, yeah, the <laughs> bu bunch of stuff that comes with it too. Uh, the the change log is pretty sizable. A bunch of new translations, uh, camera sensitivity stuff. Um, yeah. They, they they keep they keep developing it and unlike some games this these guys actually went out of early access and they're just like yeah we're just gonna keep adding new shit why not i mean it's their thing now in in their not defense this thing was in early access for like six years man so and, yeah and in their defense i will say they're at least keeping the 32-bit option for a while for those people who still have you know old netbooks that they want to play Besiege on. Pedro Kudos Medeiros. if you can, Pedro because Medeiros. I tried. Yeah, okay. This is what <laughs> exactly what I was getting to. Have you tried to play this on a... Yeah, I tried this and a few other uh, Steam games. The Steam client loads, no problem. You have to disable a bunch of stuff, and you have to set the library to small mode so it doesn't get any of the new whooshy stuff that it does. But yeah, no. Besiege was one of the games that it starts, but it adds... That's five. We're getting five FPS in the menu. So, what if no. what if you had a netbook <laughs> with an integrated NVIDIA Ion graphics? You might get. I mean, six. I do have one, and it is thirty-two bit. It's the Compaq Mini three eleven. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I, I throw games at netbooks and to see what they can play at a at least thirty FPS. And uh, yeah, the, the Toshiba one is the best by far. Again, Nori, it's perfectly safe to lock him out under his own confession. Yeah, he won't try to get in. <laughs> yeah, he can't. He, can't. he, he mm. does. His lock picking skill isn't high enough. <laughs> My lock picks are actually in that bag you see behind me. So. Mm. Oh, that's, oh what, so you, that's you, what you, you, you carry them around. Right. Right. Yeah, you, you, you just wait, you're yeah. waiting for your opportunity. Like everybody, stand back. <laughs> I can pick locks. <laughs> But sir, Admittedly, when I'm alone in the office, I go around and I try to pick the camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that, and that's when security uh, because, uh, swings on by and they're like, uh, you know what? I'm what not you, gonna what are you doing? To discourage you because that could end horribly hilarious. Um, but <laughs> that's gonna do. Yes. Coming up next, we got some NVIDIA drivers for you, and we got a big old middle finger to uh, Germany. Middle finger. I have just been accused of being shiny. I'm not entirely sure how I respond to that. Mostly Vampire. because I scrubbed myself fairly thoroughly <laughs> when I showered earlier. So I don't Stuff know. Stuff them full of garlic. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, man. Maybe you buffed. <laughs> Buff, buff oh, I, I yeah. scrub myself so much that I polished. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> that would make me I, shiny, I suppose. Yeah. Quiet, yeah. quiet, Edward. He said shiny, not sparkly. Come on. Be fair to him. That's, 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 the same, that's the same thing. I'm t- I, listen, I'm, I am team Edward James almost personally. If when, when, when Adama showed up with the battle star and started sh- blowing vampires and werewolves out I swear with like real good. Adama, if you drop Galactica out of orbit on this fuckhead's face, I will not shed a tear. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, all right. And, and, and enough writing fan fiction. If you want to, if you want to fund our screenplay, head on over to patreoncom slash Linux game cast, become a Patreon. You get some cool stuff in exchange for giving us money, uh, like access to our discord channel, which you can also get it through, um, subbing to us on Twitch, which is what you got to do. If you want to play track mania with this guy. Yes. I'm pointing in the right direction. You got Absolutely. lucky on that one, I, man. That's always 50, no, 50, isn't it? I, I, I took a second and made sure I was pointing I in the right direction. Did, did you like bring up a finger? Like, which one? No, yeah, this one. Right. No, I, no, because I, I know it's always the opposite of the one. Because if I want to point here, like this is this is me thinking I'm pointing at you, but I'm actually pointing at Pedro. Anyways, point your finger at our Patreon, sub to it, get access to our show notes, the video feed for the pre pre super shows and lots of cool stuff. You can get you get to hang out with us. You can talk to us the other six days of the week. We're pretty active in there. Oh, no. Now you've double fucked me. You you. <laughs> You rotten asshole, you. My God. It's mirror oh, universe, Jordan. Yes. You have to be nice now. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Now I have to shave my beard. I'll be back in. All right. <laughs> um, no, uh, we, 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 we got, we got uh, store as well. Store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy some lovely Linux Gamecast merch, maybe even in mirror, mirror vision. You don't know. Um, <laughs> but the lo- if the logo, if the logos show up on the opposite side, you might be in an alternate dimension, but you know, our shipping is pretty reasonable. Even across dimensions, we'll send it through the Stargate. It's all good. Um, buy some coffee cups, buy some stickers, buy some t-shirts, good stuff. We got, we got other ways to support us as well. If you go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over that support button. I want to say I did got- an update. I did an Ooh. update thing. Um, Ooh. Yeah. It mixed around with like, well, I, I fought with viewport. If anybody's ever dealt with the web zone, you know, and I was like, Oh, okay. You used to be in the old days. You can kind of go by resolutions, but now these damn kids get their, high res mobile devices that are six inches and I'm like, nope. So I set it to screen size and it still didn't want to play ball. So the problem was is like getting to the menu frosty. I was like, Hey, how do I get to the wish list? He was going to buy like Jill something. And um, I'm like, Oh, right. You have that bug. So I've just said, fuck it. <laughs> I just put everything in one. Like, all right. Well, all right. there, there, there you go. What does Jordan very have this around. week? <laughs> Heavy duty Crane's- crane scale. Why? Yeah. Uh, band tension doing conjugate training. That is ridiculous. I will disown anyone who purchases that as opposed to the DH labs, RCA cables, five meters, <laughs> only $3,684. Well, well I, I, I got to connect something to my fucking RGB sound card. <laughs> you know what? You can connect. Um, oh, I'll vouch for these. We're taking a look over it and we're creeping on Pedro's LJC list. Uh, the magnetic filters, decent. They get the job mm-hmm. done. I have them on Jackbox. Uh, no T for you. Uh, Let's see. Laptop RAM. You know, you could a- have- apparently he needs to shave. Yeah, I'm just saying only if Nori shaves him on stream. It's a trimmer, on. so I don't have to take the scissors and do it manually. It takes like 15 minutes to get through this. 15 minutes. So, yes, that that's why that's there. <laughs> and, of course, we got one for the studio. If you want to be on our fine, upstanding cannibal wall where we can publicly shame you each and every episode and everything I do here. Um, I don't have anything crazy like this is all no. studio stuff it's like hard drives uh i got a bot oh wait hang on i put some down here too didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> motherboards stuck it stuck it near the bottom just so no one finds it yeah i got that but uh, i'll make fun of you if you spend eight hundred dollars on me i will probably not um, talk imagine. to you for a, a long time then again that might be yeah. Yeah, whatever um <laughs> thank you for letting us do what we do loud live independent yeah. commercial free you might not like what we say sometimes but you know we fucking mean it nor we're not being out 
influenced by anything other than shiny Pedros. So I consider that an absolute meh. All right. I mean, that's a repellent, if anything. I don't know. I've got shades, bitch. We can make it work. I I, I still like to maintain that the only headphones we will try to sell you are a 40-year-old pair of studio mixers from the 80s. Yes. Not some Raycons or anything Mm. like that. No. So, uh, new kernel. No. New drivers. Who No. No. We're actually starting the news off old, uh, old old-timey style. Everything old is news again. Mm. (laughs) Yes. But uh, the new NVIDIA 510-3901 beta, the drivers, they're out. And uh, yeah, it's uh, they fixed a bunch of things. Uh, the one that stuck out to me was they uh, fixed the bug which caused OpenGL and Vulkan applications to generate excessive oh, traffic on the bus yeah. while attempting to communicate with NVIDIA Power D, even though NVIDIA Power D was not running. To give you a little bit of context, uh, what that does is it's just it just sends tons of messages over Dbus because it's failing to talk to PowerD uh, to the point where your Dbus message uh, starts taking up two three gigabytes of RAM just from the NVIDIA drivers, and that has been an issue that was reported in October 2021, uh, and in January 2022. They finally decided to do something about it. Hmm. Three months. That's not, that's not a bad turnaround <laughs> time. Not not at all for drivers. Yeah. Um, there's also a shit ton of new Vulcan exp- extensions. If you're wondering why those change logs are so long, there's a lot of that in there. Um, they're still fucking around with the GBM backend, it looks like. Also, you're going to need kernel 310 or bus. So if you're on CentOS 6, get fucked. Um, also apparently globally setting GL threaded optimizations was causing some Vulcan hiccups that are now fixed. I thought that was on by default. They may have flipped that off uh, as a result in the previous driver. I'm not sure. I haven't had to set that recently because you know, everything runs pretty well in Vulcan. You don't need the, you don't need to have faster open GL anymore. Right. The only thing I ran across, yeah. uh, I thought everything was fine. Everything was swimming and everything's running good. Cause I set them up here on the uh, box in the studio running Debian 11. Didn't run into the issues until I tried to do some work on uh, DaVinci Resolve was a little fussy. I had to kind of hit it a couple of times and it finally opened. Then I got into editing. Then it just decided it didn't want to work. Had to revert. It got really fussy. So that was really the only thing that I noticed that yep. was an issue. Outside of that, big chunky yep. change long. I keep looking for the 2060 12 gig um, like note and supported products, but they're just like, that doesn't exist. Look over there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm running, I'm running them right the now. GPU as the yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's just more more RAM, right? That would that would be handled in the BIOS. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm running them right now. There's no. I haven't run into any issues uh, so far. Nothing has fucked up Take. substantially. And yeah, but the, I in mean, fact, that's, I'm that's running better. <laughs> I'm running better yeah. because my uh, Dbus message isn't taking up several gigabytes of RAM instead of the two megabytes that it usually takes. Yeah. Oh yeah, and on on a <laughs> Nvidia Ion netbook, it really does matter. Insert Google uh, Chrome joke. Th- here. That's using uh, yes. the 390 legacy driver. So all right, all right, all right. All right. Well, <laughs> so so t- talk talk to me about big old German middle fingers, then. Videocards.com. All this is going to be in our show notes after the fact, so don't worry about it right now. AMD's 199 Radeon RX 6500 XT officially gets 300 <laughs> euro to 324 <laughs> euro MSRP. From not Yusus, but Asus. Um, it hurts my balls. To which I think everyone, including myself, we kind of went, yeah, probably, 100%. Kind of makes me a little bit of sad. This is a source directly from Asus to Germany, and um, Andreas Schilling reporting this uh, does make me a little bit sad because, honestly, I was thinking like 250, 270 plus for a 199 card in 2022, which is uh, still a lot of freedom units, but man, in this weird fucked up time, that seems like a grand deal for a card <laughs> that trades blows with a 1660 Super, which would cost you quite a bit more. Now, like most of you, yes. I don't care. I don't. Uh, GPU mm-hmm. announcements don't exist to me right now. I'm like, oh, that's cute, as you were, because buying a new GPU... Uh, today just is not something that goes to my brain anymore. I had false hope for a little bit, but after year two of this, I'm good. And like this shit can unfuck itself or I can just keep running this 2060 and hope it doesn't explode. That's where I'm at. 
Yeah, there it's may not, yeah, it's be not like you're something. doing any mining with it, so right. it'll probably last for a while. <laughs> there may be a chance that these don't sell terribly well uh, after the initial batch because they're all going to get bought anyway. But uh, the limitations of the 6500 XD specifically, like no AV1 decoding. So if you're watching a YouTube channel that does uh, that does have their videos in AV1, your 4K contents and whatnot, probably not uh, not going to get any hardware acceleration. And it is uh, bus limited to PCIe Gen 4 by 4. So if you put it in a Gen 3 system, you only get gen 3 by 4 speeds which is half of what the uh generation 4 speeds are so yes these hey Pedro. may hmm? have you ever like um you know you get like gen 3 by 16 right uh gen 4, and gen 4. i have an x570 okay see i just get the old school like gen 3 stuff when my little 2016 sometimes when i'm just hammering on it i'll pull that up and sometimes i can get it to one percent <laughs> on, on the bus utilization yeah, yeah. For uh, I, all I'm saying is of, that I've seen so many people who are like it's the buy thing. I'm like it fucking don't matter, man. You're rounding errors, <laughs> yeah. No, rounding for games, errors. it's not going to make that much of a difference. But let's be honest, it's not people who play games who are buying video cards right now. They're not as much as we wanted to be those people. They're not coming to us where we don't even fucking see them. But yeah, no, Asus is marking up their what's supposed to be like the lowest end of their custom designs, the Tough series. Mm-hmm. Another 35 bucks on top of the MSRP. Why? Because fuck you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, and we're, we're going to continue seeing this trend for a good long while. But, you know, maybe what do you, maybe guys you think, want? Here, here, here's the thing. No. This is, do any of these companies realize, everyone has to realize that this is not sustainable and you're you're not going to condition the market because no one and nobody, even the people paying the iron price right now for video cards is like, okay, this is just how things are now. No, no one's sitting here doing that. I I don't think you're going to get the populace going, oh no, now cards are just two to $300 more, period. And um, you, you, you the, think there's going to be a bust? The, the short term. Always think of with a short term. People got long memories, man. Like you, you're not going to buy an Asus product because of motherboard a decade ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is what I'm thinking. And a lot of people are sitting there. I'm just saying Intel just walk in with halfway performance shit at regular prices on shelves. Everybody's going to love you, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's ma- not a ma- hard market to please right no. now because don't be a complete <laughs> jackal. No one has anything. Yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, don't give, 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 us, give us a little. Don't blatantly, <laughs> just so clearly, just you know, um, take advantage of this situation. Like, mm-hmm. come on, dial it back a <laughs> little bit. And like, oh fuck, we can get three hundred euros. For this. <laughs> yeah, do what Nvidia is doing and pretend like you don't have that much stock. Mm. Or so. do what Sony's doing and just make more of your old shit. Nah, man. Fuchs, you. <laughs> Fuchs all of them in their texts. Is- go, 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 foo text yourself. Yeah. Uh, so if you've been following kernel development, you might have heard that 516 got released with the foo text, the wait for foo text uh, system method in place. And uh, the wine people have said, that's fantastic. You guys can have fun with that. We're not going to fucking deal with that. Yeah, because apparently the uh, Futex patches in wine staging have been a bit of a maintenance nightmare. Uh, when you're a kernel developer, all you have to do is provide the interface, handle the scheduling, your gravy. When you're trying to recreate an entire operating system behavior abstraction layer, then it becomes a little more challenging when you need to introduce these new uh, weight mechanisms, especially when you're using other work routes. So, this and other reasons is why we're not going to be getting Futex in vanilla wine anytime soon. So if you're going to want to use it, though, luckily for you, there is another wine project out there that integrates that. And that's Proton uh, or a custom wine build uh, like Lutris GE or Wine GE or any of those guys uh, that will be implementing Futex too, just not in your official vanilla wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of brought this up earlier this week in our Discord, which uh, does this have any performance benefits outside of gaming? really so yeah i understand um everyone on the wine team going mm. i mean especially look at it like the wine change logs especially since we get the protons now it is very much heavily focused on desktop you know 
applicant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not games, but every now and then a game thing comes in there, which is always nice to see. Uh, it's it's the upstream relationship, right? Like, yeah, Pro- Proton is taking the bulk of the game support stuff off of the wine staff so they can focus on just like making their Windows compatible. And not all games saw any kind of performance benefit from F Sync. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, Valve themselves have admitted to that. Like some games, you won't see any performance difference, while others, you'll see a significant one. So it was a lot of work for just the very few teeny tiny little amount of games that showed any actual improvement. So yeah, no, I do not blame them at all. I mean, I mean, the the, the, the advantage now on Linux is that you have that sort of scheduling model available to you now. So mm-hmm. native stuff mm-hmm. can take advantage of it as well. Um, but yeah, uh, no, no Futex in wine. Well, you, maybe. So. Just maybe you can get some Futex action on your brand new, reasonably priced standalone toaster for your head top. That's right. <laughs> That's right. This is, this is what well, I'll sit back and be like, man, I'd really like to get face fucked by a toaster, but I don't like this wire. <laughs> People got a solution for you. I'm talking about, we've mentioned this a couple of times, the SVR, sim, I would still want to call it Stimula VR, but it's Simula VR. They finally got some pricing out on the mysterious standalone headset is not cheap it's not cheap but currently right now the backup price is $27.99 Ugh. yeah that's not $27.99 in there, cents, by the way msrp $34.99 coming soon to kickstarter but i want to give them credit because they took the time to walk you through what this thing's actually gonna cost how many projects have mm-hmm. we seen throughout some bullshit pricing information get everyone to go into it. And that was just to gauge interest. And they're like, okay, this only works if we can get some outside investors. Now that we've shown that people are interested, they never, that never happens. And years later, the Kickstarter Indiegogo drags on. And eventually that project just disappears, you know, not from maliciousness is they had a fucked up business model. These guys, these gals, everyone involved. They're like, okay, this is what it's really going to take for us to go from this idea production to getting this in your hands. And I think, it's very reasonable for, you know, a relatively small batch of headsets. They're going to need $2.5 million to start cranking these toasters out. That's going to be 892 headsets at $27.99 to hit the break-even point. And for a Linux-based self-contained VR headset, you're talking about a niche market inside of a niche market. Very ambis- ambitious. Yes, ambitious. Ambish. To say the least. Now, ambish. I do wonder. I do wonder if there's going to be a big enough market for... No matter how you want to cut this, enthusiast, I look at this as like, I really want to play around with one of these because they're crazy high resolution comparatively for the work that Simula has done for VR desktops. I'm not even thinking about gaming. I'm like, ooh, I could have that set up. You know, it's just a shame that I wouldn't have the space or equipment to record and do videos on things like that. And and, not unless um, you become a VTuber. Yes, I'll be a VTuber. A VTuber. I'll put a puppet on my hand and smash it. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I, I, I watched that. Short and sweet and to the point. For, for at least 15 minutes. That's at it. least 15 and minutes. I might, I might throw some background music in every day. <laughs> no, it is. The pricing is jarring when you first look at it, but then it's a computer. It's a whole self-contained unit mm-hmm. with I, the only wire being the one that you need to power it and you're probably going to be using the battery for most of the time anyway that seems to be the point so yeah that's this you gotta think about this as like the prototype to phase one of the thing everyone at least myself it's like this is how you get me into vr and they even make mention that like later on they're gonna have versions you know they're gonna have the simula vr plus wires and shit at a lower cost with you mm-hmm. know that you can tether to a pc and all that but Give them a shout out. There'll be a link in the description if it's your thing. And um, honestly, a little rich for my blood. But if you're looking for like development, then get some foothold. I can definitely see people being interested in this. Yeah, definitely. Um, And like, yeah, I've I've been saying this for a while. Like VR is still in this infancy. Uh, The technology is going to be in a place where it's going to fail more than it succeeds. But that failure is kind of necessary to understand what works and what doesn't. So it's good Mm -hmm. to see people are like willing to take the leap forward. Yeah. And I mean, they are actively doing work on like filters to clean up text and VR for that virtual desktop experience. So Mm -hmm. this is not going to be their first or hopefully last Rodeo, but we got to talk about some Dix Vicks. 
Oh, Ooh. yeah, baby. Brand new release, Dixvix193. Uh, and comes with some neat stuff. Uh, DLSS will now work with the DXVK version of NV API, which is pretty cool. So now you can actually get your uh, DLSS running uh, just generically uh, via uh, via Proton uh, or via DXVK, anyways. Um, there's also some more accurate DXV or DX9 Somebody behavior still too. Plays Rocksmith. Yeah, huh. people people are people are still <laughs> doing that. Like it's it's pretty popular for like musicians and people uh, just want to like learn how to play guitar. Right? Do, like, do they have one for like a the, like uh, the tambourine smith? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, ca- it's called uh, getting over it with Bennett Foddy. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, dark, but the uh, Pe- Pedro's uh, most hated Dark Souls game has some uh, graphical issues that are now fixed because that. And also, if you're because uh, you know, let's let's face it, if you're playing Black Mesa under Linux, you're probably playing it under Proton because mm-hmm. the native version is not great. So you're getting some less sketchy shadows there, which is nice. I mean, I went out of my way to get the collector's edition for Dark Souls 2. The original one. Not you got it because it came sin. with a doll. Well, the doll was No, sir, I didn't bonus, see you playing with actually... your dolls again, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I very much wanted the original version because if you go looking for Steam keys, because it's not for sale on Steam anymore, but there are still keys floating out there and they're like 50 or 60 pounds for a key for the original version. And it had a bug with Proton that uh, as you, like the very first area when you spawn in, there's a lot of grass. And the grass would just flicker in and out of existence uh, before this version of the XVK. And apparently that is also uh, one of the things that made some of the flickering happen in Bayonetta. That's been fixed too, because it was the same... um, a direct text floating point behavior that was affecting all of these games. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Again, exciting times because we you get stuff like you're not even thinking about some of this stuff. Like, oh, nobody will ever go. Oh, look, they fixed that. Also, um, I think yeah. this sorts the uh, <laughs> RGB foliage in Horizon Ginger Turbo as well. Mm-hmm. Even though also, I wouldn't uh, know you- because I can't get the LSS working with that stupid game. Also, if you picked up uh, Injustice for free back when it was free a while ago, mm. uh, now you'll have your full character roster on the character select screen. Super sweet. Uh, I, I, I was scrolling through shit. I was like, why the hell do I have Injustice? Oh, right. Yeah. They were just giving that shit away. <laughs> right. Yep. <laughs> that, yeah. I think I had that. What is Injustice? Oh, that's where it is. Or never mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready to humble. This is something uh, we need to talk about because there's a lot of confusion. The humble choice is leveling up next month. From the humble source, we've been listening to the no, the fuck you haven't. Shut up. Um, we basically, if you had you know the humble monthly thing, like I got, there's a thing called the trove, which is a collection of DRM free games that you can just log in and download them anytime you fucking want. Well, that's going away, not for Windows users, but for us filthy degenerate Linux and Mac users. That's right, just in time for the Steam Deck. Um, we're going Windows only over at Humble. You're going to need a Windows app the humble app for that and that's probably going to do fuck knows what but the reason i wanted to point this out is i've seen a lot of people thinking that their drm free downloads are going to go from go away from their humble like key list and stuff like that that's not the case this is only for the monthly thing that you if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about the trove thing previous humble monthly now called the trove right which they, they could, they definitely could have done a better job at communicating that because it was have. a little ambiguous. It yeah, is. That's but. why I wanted, that's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Um, so like dial down your pink on that completely rightfully. So as somebody who has the monthly thing, I've never downloaded anything or DRM, but I'm still like, fucking why? Like, what, what, yeah. what's the point in this? Because fuck you. That's why. Well, yes, that's, yeah. what, that's what we concluded Effectively, at the board meeting. Yeah. Yes. Because fuck you. Pr- pretty right much. here on the whiteboard. Um, <laughs> Humble built their reputation on the backs of Linux users, mm-hmm. donating obscene amounts of money for games that were yeah. not, frankly, worth that much. Uh, and it's it's great to see them turn around and just be like, yeah, get 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 fucked, you guys. Let's see how we um, can get more money out of Sony by doing PlayStation bundles, and we can get more um, you, money out well, of. Okay. Uh, Let's you, you, be you, you, gotta, you gotta remember AAA publishers in general. <laughs> uh, go on, go on. Humble turned into just another online digital store. And we've said this multiple times over the years, like a long time ago. Yeah. And for, for a while, let's, let's be real for a while, their Linux upload process was send us an email with a zip file and we'll get it up there. Eventually. Like 
Humble has a very storied history <laughs> of, um, of of neglecting their Linux infrastructure, mm-hmm. and this is just par for the course, right? Like it is. Uh, not, it's not. One, surpri- it's not surprising. I don't like it. They even changed surprising. like. You know, the last time we really talked about Humble's when they modified the thing of like uh, the slider scale. Now the fixed amount goes to developers and the fixed amount to charity. The one saving grace I will say from the Humble store and, you know, full disclosure, we have a Humble affiliate thing going on uh, is that they still do a percentage to charity, which is better than any other store. Yes. What do you what were you searching for? I was trying to buy you time, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, this uh, little hard drive here, Western Digital Black, 500 gigabytes, contains all of my humble uh, Linux games what that about, I downloaded a while back. What about your Desura yeah. games? Uh, Man, I, I, I put, re- remember when Desura gave you I have the ability on to tra- Steam? Yeah, they, they gave you that ability to pull your license out of Desura and transfer it to Steam. Yeah. And I did that for any game on Desura I gave a shit about. Um, I, which was uh, there were only punch. two games that didn't give me that option. One of them was sacred gold and the other one, I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. Uh, was it that, that golf one, game? I think. No. Um, okay. Here's the, the, the one, zombie golf shooter. The ring. Uh, no, I know the one you're talking about. The, uh, the one that I was concerned that I think has just been lost to the ages because the only place it ever was, was on Desura was like that little pickle game where you went through like a little mine cart race. We've reviewed it a long time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, yeah, the, the the description here. I, I have an image in my head <laughs> that, that I I have no idea if that actually corresponds uh, to any game in reality. I just made it Rick. Up. Yeah, the game. <laughs> so yeah, those have been lost to time. I understand like digital archivists, and I'm down with all that. So um, yeah, it's kind of a dick move, but fortunately, it only is effect. I guess it affects me. Out of the three of us, which I'm just yep. like, I just have that monthly thing to do what I am like, Hey, you know what? I, now I've come up with a good system to give away keys each and every week. Yay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up next, uh, we are going to teach you about line endings in windows and Unix. In Get dashed. Welcome back to the Chair Acquisition. It's where we take a game, we install it on a bunch of different Linuxes, and uh, we uh, tell you how it works and what we thought about it. We rate it on our divinely inspired cha- lawn chair rating system from one to four lawn chairs. It's the most accurate, the most precise metric that you could possibly use, and that's why we use it here. This week, we're taking a look at Buck Up and Drives, uh, developed by Pedro. How did you say the guy's name earlier? You said it. You said it very peculiarly. Uh, I said, let me scroll back up. Fabio Funch. <laughs> Fabio Funch. Okay. Uh, done on Game Maker <laughs> Studio. You can pick it up for about eight bucks US. What is an endless driving game inspired by arcade classics with simple yet intense gameplay featuring a total slap in the face of realism and a kick in the spleen too. And we got to thank uh, Fabio Funch for sending us some keys over uh, Creator Connect. I'm sure it's not Fontes. Fonts. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure that sounds like a Portuguese name. So the Portuguese is an enigma. We've been this. I, 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 I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get shit for uh, for fonching it up. Uh, anyways, uh, I guess I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go first here. Uh, so on Fedora 35, 64 bit with the R9 3900X GTX 1080 Ti. Um, so let, here here's the thing. Let, let, let's take an opportunity to remind our dear viewers about line endings and how different operating systems have different ones. You see. Uh, when you, when you have a new line in a text file, that's actually a special character that indicates to your text editor or your terminal or whatever, that there is a new line present and it should move it to the next line down, uh, under windows, it is slash CRLF under Linux. It is slash N, uh, and there's a utility you can run called DOS to Unix that will turn the one to the other. And there's also Unix to docs to vice versa, and it will make sure that your scripts can run on whatever operating system you intend to. This is a thing that Fabio Fonch should know. Uh, he Fonched it up, indeed. Uh, but after you do all that shit, run DOS Unix on the uh, startup script, it launches, runs pretty well afterwards. The button prompts are very nice and generic. They don't give you like an A, B, X, Y, whatever. It's just the position on the controller, which is a reasonable compromise. I'll accept that. Um, I like the little soundtrack loop. Uh, these guys thought it was a little pre- repetitive. I thought, I, I don't know. I, th- I think it's the hallmark of one of these good game music loops that you can sort of listen to it pretty, uh, pr- pretty, or for an extended period of time and not completely hate it. And I don't, so it's pretty nice. Um, 
And yeah, fun wise, it's an infinite runner with a twist. You're a car and you got to do skateboard tricks. Uh, and it's certainly no skate burp in that department. I mean, I didn't, I didn't hate it, which is pretty good for someone who doesn't really like uh, driving games. Lining up those tackles, as I was saying before, is a bit of a pain in the ass because once you pass a vehicle, it disappears. So you got to fucking know the distance that it takes to tackle something or you are fucked. Um, also, eventually, you're going to have to tell people to move, bitch, get out the way. Uh, if you want to be able to meet some of those time uh, requirements. So it, it's a little bit more of a pain point. Um, I don't know. The, 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 the driving and the flailing ground is fun at first, but I feel it lacks a little bit of staying, staying power. I didn't hate it. It's just okay in my book. I just want people to know how to put a new line in a Linux system. I'm going to give it two chairs. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of that, which is something you don't see a lot for the games we throw at chairs nowadays. But hey, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, hitting that play button out of the box does nothing. Why? Because of the line endings, literally. So uh, if you go look at the forums, uh, Flibbit has actually jumped in. It's like, yeah, you done goofed on that one. Uh, I gave an option. It's in my show notes if you want to go have a look, but Jordan's one is much easier. You just DOS to Unix to that file and you're up and running. Or you can just go to the folder and right click or double click to run it from the binary proper. It is locked at 60 FPS because Game Maker Studio. Uh, and given my experience in the past with Game Maker Studio, especially the fact that it doesn't seem to like um, the... Um, PlayStation controllers, at least uh, running over blue teeth. I didn't even try it. Uh, but yeah, the music is on a fairly short loop. Uh, and Jordan already alluded to this, but it is very high energy. But you start to notice it. Uh, if you're on a run for like 10, 20 minutes, it's like, oh, this is the same song still. And then you start to pay attention. Oh, it loops like every minute and change. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the graphics and like the overall acrobatics, everything over the top, uh, that's very much where this shines. It's very retro, yes, but it's also very fluid, and it's a very good-looking game. As for the fun, well, it is fun, in small doses. Have a sit-down, uh, do one of the quote-unquote endless drives until you run out of time, enjoy the wonky cars over the top physics, that's what it's here for, that's what it's here to do, and that's what it does. I like this, but it doesn't really keep me hooked for very long beyond that. I finish a run and I close the game and I go do something else. It's cleverly done. The stage lengths keep increasing uh, as you keep getting better uh, to give you more of a challenge. There's a lot of different stages. Some are very busy around the edges of the road, like the stuff in the background. So I find myself favoring the non-city ones because with the city ones, there's a lot of color. There's a lot of stuff flying by and my eyes just get a little bit confused. But there's different cars uh, to unlock, you have to beat the uh, the rival, as you saw earlier, if you were looking at the video version. Um, but it's you're always going to be using the latest one you unlock because you sh you're showing yourself off. It's like, hey, there you go. I, I beat that guy. But, are, and are I would have actually like, it, mechanically different? Yes, they're not. They're the same. They just look different. But yeah, they. I'd, I've, I've actually would have given this game three chairs, but that little cock up with the launch script is pretty bad in 2022. So it gets two chairs. <laughs> All right. How about you, Vin? <laughs> oh, man. Let's, let's see if I can power through this one. Embrace yourselves. Doesn't launch out of the box. Not acceptable. 2022 in the year of our deck, ladies and gentlemen. I gave Buck Up and Drive a solid 30 minutes of my time, and that seems to be 30 minutes more than the developers spent testing their Linux build. I'm a man of the people. Now, let this be a learning moment. You know, not a shaming moment. You just don't rely on any engine to poop out a perfect build, be it Game Maker, be it Unity, be it Unreal, etc. These things need testing, and that's on you. And here's the thing. The her Linux nerds just boot into window. That excuse is about to go up in a glorious ball of smoke. When the deck gets released, at least we hope that will be the case. It's time to develop new habits, everyone. Now, after launching the game from a terminal, sorry, Linus, it popped up a window and it went full screen. Xbox worked out. No problems with the controller. Didn't try it with the PS4. Both the analog stick and the left button work. That's all you need to control this bad boy. 60 FPS, going to 60, game maker. And uh, as Pedro said, hope you like that one soundtrack because that, that's what you're going to get in repeat. Now, Buckle up and drive. This game was clearly inspired by that arcade game from Yakuza Zero. You know, like that arcade game from Yakuza Zero. I mean, it's an endless runner. You race the clock, but with a twist. 
as it would seem. Scientists have managed to splice the DNA from a car built for drifting with Tony Hawk. Now, that might seem like a bad idea at first, but the results can be quite interesting. What we have is a motoring vehicle that only sees gravity as a suggestion, and it's able to generate boost by wiggling its bum. That's all quite entertaining at first, but you know, with flippity doodahs and grindy sparkly slides, well, at the end of the day, it's all about outrunning a clock, like the arcade game from Yakuza Zero. Now, if you like putting points on the board to compete with internet friends and family and all that, wait until the developer um, decks up their build, fixes it, sorts it. Then consider giving it a look. You know, I'm going to say 639, 20% off if you're prepared to launch it from a terminal. Or you can look in Shot Realm Dynamic, uh, the arguments going on about what the proper method of using Perl scripts and or um, said to sort this particular <laughs> problem, if that's your gem. Excellent. But I'm just going to Lux. say for me in 2022, if it doesn't launch out of the box, that just tells me you didn't test it. So I'm just going to say give us a pass until that gets sorted. I think that's yeah. fair. Yeah, one one thing, one other thing I forgot to add is there is actually a couch multiplayer thing here, which I guess on the deck you're going to be using remote play for it. But essentially, uh, it's the rival fights, but both both of you get to drive. Um, so that, that, you are very much encouraged to bash into the other person okay. while the rival yeah. uh, in the the endless mode. I, I mean, that, that, that's, 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 how, that's how you, you. win. <laughs> Now, yeah. and, and anyone who saw that QR code, snap a picture of that. Send us some hate mail uh, if you find out what that thing actually is. <laughs> One of the things I'm really curious awful. about. Uh, now, the game looks really nice. I, I dig the art style. And I mean, it, it's very, uh, you know, it definitely pays homage to the that racing game in Yakuza. But um, as far as like the replayability of it, like, this is something you can pick up. And are you going to go back to it? Because I, I thought, I'm like, yeah, I played this game. I mean, it's good. It's well done. I like the look of it, like the feel of it, but there's like three of these games that I can think of on Linux that we've played. Horizon <laughs> Chase Turbo, right? Yes. <laughs> Horizon Chase Turbo and uh, the other one, Horizon Chase Turbo was more of a puzzle game. Mm. Just dodge mm-hmm. the cars, figure out the exact point at yeah. which to dodge. Drift left, drift but left, But it was the other left. one, uh, uh, the other one that was uh, by the Brazilian developer, I I don't remember. It came in an yeah. app image. I remember all of that, but I don't remember the name of the game. <laughs> um, I, I dig it. And like when you have to like beat the NPC that shows up, that I was having flashbacks to a couple of weeks ago when we were playing Super Tux Kart and the guy showed up and he's like, all I do is play Super Tux Kart. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'm top 15. I play this game. It's yeah. all I do. And he's <laughs> like, just oh, slapping okay. his driving sideways. and like, I'm against that guy. <laughs> <Good luck. Yeah. laughs> all right. All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Coming up next, Pedro, you got to hold on to your laptops. Someone's coming for them. <laughs> and his name the is Macho Man Randy Savage. This is it. This is the hate mail. I don't know about you, but I like me some hate mail. Um, I thrive on hate mail. That's probably why no one sends it to us anymore, uh, or very occasionally. <laughs> uh, though... This week, we we do have some uh, genuine hate mail and a threat, maybe. But if you'd like to send threats our way, you can go to LewisGameCast.com, <laughs> oh, hit the no. contact button, and, <laughs> and fill out the form. L, uh, LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to. Uh, there's some caveats at the top. If you'd like us to have a look at something, don't include URLs. Let us know about it uh, in text. And we'll, uh, we can use the Google and DuckDuckGo and the Bing. Pedro, there's an email address cleverly encoded on that page as well. If you just want to send us one of those. (laughs) That's between the caveats and the form. So one of the things that that I've done is because here's something that I genuinely dislike. If I'm trying to get a hold of somebody, you know, if I'm like, Hey, I want to mention something or something. Have Maybe this has happened to you. Like, if you see a show or a project or something, like, how the fuck am I supposed to get a hold of you? We've made that as simple as possible. Drop us a comment on YouTube, leave us a message on Patreon, or use the actual contact form there. You can even mention us on Twitter. That tends to work Mastodon as well. But, long-time viewer of the show, if you, you know anything about Pedro, the other six days of the week, we hang out and uh, collaborate in Discord, which is open for patrons and uh, Twitch subs. And... 
varied, varied topics, but something that usually comes up at least every other week <laughs> is Pedro buys a new piece of junk and tortures it. Torches. I don't torture it. I make them work tor- tor- again. Torching her. That, that's the big one. I will make you beautiful. Am I pretty now, Faja? <laughs> There you go. See, it's the Dell with the flippity screen, uh-huh. which I always wanted one because it is ridiculous. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Ladies and ridiculous. gentlemen, this is what a premature <laughs> midlife crisis looks like, if you're wondering. <laughs> I, I mean, g- g- given the boy's lifestyle, this may very well be his midlife crisis. Fair. Uh, but uh, really been dead. <laughs> I'm 35. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but yes, uh, Pe- Pedro has a rival in this this ev- endeavor of his. And he says, aha, I am the vintage laptop thief. I will steal all of Pedro's refurbished vintage laptops and throw them where they belong. In the garbage. Not even the e-waste disposal. In the garbage. You shouldn't have kept Windows 7 on those laptops. Your enemy, the vintage laptops thief, a.k.a. Crossclaw20. <laughs> hmm. I have an international laptop thief that is just going to... Create more um, pollution on the planet okay. by tossing them in the Okay, I got a real question. Um, a, would you contact the authorities if you came home one day and uh, all of your vintage, air quote, laptops were just uh, thieved? Yes. You would. See, you all, would. all okay. I can- No, because here's the problem with that. This, this is going to come up that. <laughs> see, see, see. The, the only thing that is, is going to get a call <laughs> from the international authority. Do, do, do you really see <laughs> what, 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 the international anybody, laptop thieves uh, yeah, or Cambridge laptop police going? Okay, well there there is one point we, we have to investigate all, everything up to and including um, international. Um, <laughs> random I, I, threat I mean, from the internet. I mean, is is there, is there like a dollar limit? Like they, they can't, you can't press charges unless like the the crime was like valued over five hundred dollars or something. I I, I don't know. Um, the only thing I can think of is I've seen, I've seen Frostclaw. He's, he's been on camera on the stream. I'm just imagining him in like a swiper costume from Dora, the Explorer Mm -hmm. trying to sneak into Pedro's (laughs) first floor apartment. And that's just going to be stuck in my brain forever. So thank you for that. Oh man. Tune in next week for CSI FML edition. Um, (laughs) I, you know what? I think Nori would stop you. (laughs) Or it's like, Nice. No, like no, 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 Nori lets him in. He's like, ah, you're here for the laptops. <laughs> right. Yeah. I posted <laughs> yeah. them on Gumtree about diamond. Someone showed up. That's the thing. I'm only using one of the Kellogg's shelves. Nori is using six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's got nothing to complain about. <laughs> That's a man confident that Nori doesn't watch the eight mail segment. Well, you, you, you know, it's a small very price well to pay be awake and be listening for right single handedly saving the environment. <laughs> <laughs> is there an end goal, Pedro, to your um collection of laptops? Is Personal there's... satisfaction, and no, I'm not going to jerk off onto the laptops if that's now what you're going to do. When, that. when, when, like, when <laughs> will you be satisfied? What what is satisfaction? When is the, this? Yeah, when do you Thanos this shit? Um, when I have the really weird ones that I really wanted to have. Because this is most this mostly came up for me growing up poor and not being able to have the things that I wanted and seeing laptops is oh that looks really nice. I want it. Well now I can and I shall. I mean See, I was I was I going won't. to make I, I was gonna make that comparison because <laughs> my girlfriend is like that with Transformers. Mm. Yes. So <laughs> so uh it is that, deep-seated psychological issues but uh, yeah that that that's that, retail that's therapy reason. got it <laughs> retail therapy so you're saying you don't Start want on my... linuxgamecast.com by the way just just, just saying I don't know I I, I kind of want to just buy that one that he wants and like part it out and uh that'd be kind of fun You're going to lose money if you <laughs> I, I, that I, one you, because you, you, Pedro, you just they're not a, worth as, as a coaster for your, your big cup. Motherfucker, I'm doing it for me. Of course I'm going to lose money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, I mean, it, it is the way. How many laptops do you have, Jordan? You're online. Uh, one, two. I gave the other one away to a friend because he needed a computer. Mm-hmm. Uh, three. Mm. And that counting the work, counting the work laptop. I have one that's a straight up antique. The other one's a straight up antique. It used to be the old work laptop. And do we count ones that I don't know, Pedro, we, do you count my son Microsystems laptop as a like, 
it fits on a lap, right? Like someone my size. <laughs> yeah. it is, like, is it a foldable computer yes. with a battery? Yep. Then yes, right. <laughs> that's a laptop. Do, do, does does it have like a little handle and casters so you can drag it behind you? On no, it's a legit laptop. Airplanes? I think it runs up to like Solaris two. Mm, mm. Fancy. <laughs> on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We got to get out of here. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully we didn't scare you permanently, but maybe we didn't scare you enough. So come back next week live at 830 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Of course, an hour early in the pre-pre super shows and four patrons. But if you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter and at Vin at mass.linuxteamcast.com at federated social media instance thing for the Internet. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing my thing there, man. I'm the laptop police. If you steal laptops, I'm going to catch you. Woo, woo, you can find woo. me. Uh, yeah, woo, 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 woo. I'm basically the car from uh, Buckle Up and Drive. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool Buckle or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. I'm going to try and take on the Elite Four this week. I'm going to try and hold myself to that. All right. Yeah. And uh, I am doing maths in my head to figure out if those laptops actually meet the minimum. I think they do. Like, value-wise, I think I could totally report it. But hey, if you'd like to throw in your opinion, uh, <laughs> at Unaccounted4 on Twitch, the uh, Twitch? Twitter. Yes. That's the uh, best way to get in touch. Or if you happen to be on our Discords, you give us a shout there. I'm usually there most of the time. Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't learn fuck all this week, so let's roll some credits. I learned what the hell the most obscure netbook is. Fair. <laughs> That, that was the thing I didn't know or wanted to know, but now I do. And so here we are at the end of the show. Well, we got to thank our advisors, Omegas, Artheron. And we got to thank our C, not double, no, our executive producers, uh, Aldias, Barbara, M. Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Ms. Uh, Ko Haku, and Drummer7, and our little Nikki fans. That's the one I was trying to say Darkwing and Abstraction. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> with Sea Monsters, Jack, Renault, Ryder X, Mike, and Atreji, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclan, Strider, with the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System, T, Craig H, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen, the other one, uh, Dirty Dean, Back, Game Matron, Dodger, Xanthros, uh, Gaming something, um, Rue, and I lost them. <laughs> Maximus, look at those fuckers, these fuckos, these yes, our people, newest, shiny uh, patreons, Kr Ducky, X Elmo, JPX, and Mazius, Ma- Mazes, Ma- I don't know. Ma- it's it's Cor- Cornus, awesomeness, right? Awesomeness. <laughs> we'll see you next week, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>